Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Barometer Readings Monthly Conference Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Following the presentation, we will conduct a question and answer session, at which time instructions will be provided. For operator assistance during the call, please press star zero. I would now like to turn the meeting over to Nick Hamilton. Please go ahead, Mr. Hamilton. Thanks, operator. Hi, everyone. Happy U.S. Thanksgiving. Uh, thanks for joining us, and welcome to the uh, the regular Barometer Readings monthly conference call featuring just David Burroughs. So, as always, we have some interesting views to share pertaining to the markets and to market leadership. On the last few calls, we've discussed you know weaker breadth trends uh, and breadth model weakness in oil producers, service names, uh, which began as early as July and has clearly accelerated. We also discussed the factors at play with the recent dip we saw in October and have helped hopefully to paint a clearer picture of the type of volatility to expect uh, moving forward. Uh, this year, similar to last, has been a real, really an active year for us as we've paid attention to material changes uh, in leadership and conducted some important sector rotation. In the current environment, it's clear that successful investing will not only be determined by what you own, but also what you don't own. So to elaborate, I'll now turn the call over to David. Great. Hey, folks. Uh, thanks for tuning in uh, uh, on a day when not much uh, has been going on uh, in the U.S., certainly stuff going on in the Canadian market. Um, uh, I guess the last time uh, we did this call, we were sort of in the midst of the fall pullback that, uh, that came through equity markets. Uh, Short-term pullback, our view, I think, then and uh, as has been the case for about 18 months, was that we were likely to see short-term pullbacks, but that we were in a market that would work its way broadly higher. Uh, we do believe we're in a secular bull market, uh, which is characterized uh, by a combination of rising earnings, the expanding earnings multiple. Um, that continues to be the case. Um, a correction in the S&P all-in was about 7%. TSX is a little bit more. Um, some specific sectors... Uh, were quite negatively impacted going through that period, uh, and some sectors, you know, came through it quite nicely. In general, I would say that stocks pulled back within trend; they did not reverse. Um, interesting. In October, we had a few calls saying, "I see the portfolios are pulling back a bit." You know, have you been stopped out of a lot of stocks? And the fact is, ultimately, we got stopped out of very few positions. Um, we're never going to protect against a two or three week pullback. That's not our goal. Our goal is to make sure that we don't see a full reversal and wind up being on the wrong side of it two months into a decline. Uh, we don't want to be sellers off early strength, frankly, because if markets have short term pullbacks and turn around and take off as this one has, you don't want to be left sitting with a boatload of cash uh, in unproductive assets. So uh, as it turns out, the vast majority of our positions held up through the decline, and uh, and of course since then we've seen a significant higher market. In the last call, we talked about the fact that the fourth quarter is the strongest quarter historically, and in years where the third quarter was positive, the fourth quarter tended to have a very strong return, just about an average eight percent uh, positive return uh, in the third quarter. The second two months, or the second August months of the year, we are in that period today, and it is playing out as historically has been the case. Ultimately, we follow our breadth models. Globally, breadth for equities is improving. In other words, this rally is broadening. Uh, it is geographically um, uh, pointed towards domestic consumer-led economies and less favorable for emerging markets. Um, we're seeing that manifest itself in a bunch of ways. And you know, as has been the case, we've continued to make the case that very strong growth in energy production and low inflation is a great thing for consumer-led economies. So a key theme that we've been watching uh, really over the last number of months has been a steadily improving U.S. dollar. Interesting, it's the same condition that you had all the way through the 80s and 90s, strong dollar, strong stock market. Uh, strong dollar, again, good for a consumer-led economy, keeps inflation down. Um, but, you know, it points you towards very specific sectors. 
through most of the year, we have been focused in sectors that benefit from a strong dollar. The breadth improvement has been, um, for the most part, in consumer discretionary, technology, healthcare, financials, and transports, for it especially helped by plentiful energy, and even more by low-priced energy. Um, so if you were to look at changes that have taken place in the portfolio over the last number of months, as you know, we came into summer uh, taking advantage of the energy theme. The price of oil was $108 a barrel. We had both producers and we had um, uh, infrastructure companies. Breadth models for energy turned down in July and forced us to start reducing our weights there. And money moved in our portfolios from uh, exploration and production companies through uh, August and early September into retail uh, and technology and transportation. So for instance, in the income portfolio, uh, key positions today would be things like Home Depot, uh, Target, uh, Walmart, uh, FedEx, uh, UNP, the rail company, CNR, these are all companies that are benefiting from the current environment. In a day like today in the TSX, where TSX is down close to 1% driven by oil, all of our portfolios were broadly higher, despite the fact that our U.S. positions weren't trading. Uh, so I believe that we are in the right spots. If you looked at the metrics going through the correction, uh, high income portfolio had roughly 60% of the volatility of the team. Uh, actually, that's over the course of the year. So we're, we're, we're pleased with the way that the portfolio is performing. Um, and we came out of the correction fairly fully invested. So uh, as it is today, we're about 41% invested in U.S. securities, about 59% in Canada. We are fairly fully invested. We are focused on equities specifically U.S. and Canada, domestic consumer-led economies. Uh, we are focused in, uh, our big weights would be financials at about 40%, that's asset managers and insurance companies with some bank exposure. Uh, energy is now less than 20% of the portfolio and virtually all of that is energy infrastructure. Some of it U.S. energy infrastructure like Kinder Morgan and Williams companies, Kinder Morgan hit a new high today. So these are companies that have very little exposure to the price of oil. Energy infrastructure has the lowest correlation to price of the commodity, the highest correlation to volume growth. Uh, transports are 13% of the portfolio. Consumer discretionary, 8.5%. Technology, 6%. Consumer staples, 2%. Materials, virtually zero. Uh, so commodities and resources really not existent in this portfolio. Very much we are focused on dividend growth. We know that last year, the income portfolio dividend grew about 11%, 10.8%. This year so far, we have about 16% dividend growth in the portfolio, probably will finish the year close to 20, uh, versus the S&P that will finish close to 12 or 13%. So we're getting more than our share of dividend growth. So we're very pleased with the, with the lower volatility we're very pleased that we are positioned in sectors that really do well in the face of falling energy prices. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the U.S. positions behave tomorrow. Very happy that we were not caught in the downdraft today, uh, really in any of our positions. The equity portfolios are more U.S. centric. Roughly 65% of our equity portfolios in the U.S., about 30% in Canada. Um, the big weightings in the U.S., in the equity pool and equity fund uh, happen to have many names that are not specifically dividend payers. Uh, so that's why we have more U.S. Uh, technology be 26% of the portfolio, good semiconductor uh, and software and security exposure in the portfolio. Consumer staples about 14%, financials 13%, uh, healthcare 11.5% transports 11 and consumer discretionary 11. So very heavily focused on things that do well with low inflation uh, and uh, low commodity prices. We think that things set up extremely well going forward here. Um, there have been 21 election cycles 
since 1928 midterm election cycles. All 21 of the following 12-month periods were positive for an average 30% return for equities. So when we look at things, we see markings and characteristics that tend to be in place in a secular bull market. We're seeing falling correlations, meaning stock picking and sector selection is really important. We're seeing a strong dollar uh, and strong consumer-led economies. These are the two, two areas that we're focused. Um, we have very little commodity exposure through all of our portfolios, virtually none. Uh, they tend to do poorly with a weak dollar, uh, and uh, we are equity focused. We are seeing rising multiples, but multiples are still very low, we believe, relative to where interest rates are, making stocks attractive. Dividend growth is accelerating, but still way below long-run average for dividend payouts, leaving scope for dividend increases. Earnings came through the third quarter better than expected. Uh, the strongest quarterly earnings period in three years. And the most important thing is that if you were to overlay economic surprises over top of the price of oil inverted, you would find that when there is a drop in oil, it's very tightly correlated to an increase in economic surprises, positive economic surprises except for the fact that there tends to be a six to certainly are behaving well in the face of weak oil prices, but we believe we have yet to begin to see the positive impact on the U.S. economy. But make no mistake, there's a significant positive impact coming. So, so far indications on retail sales for the fourth quarter are coming in strong. It'll be interesting to see how this Thanksgiving uh, 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 shopping season goes. It looks as though things are going to be good. GDP growth coming in last week came in ahead of expectation. There's every sign that this uh, correlation between falling oil prices and improving economic conditions is going to continue. Um, we have had people question whether weakness in Europe and Asia is likely to wash through into the U.S. We want to point out that only 15% of U.S. corporate profits come from outside of the U.S. It really is about the most closed major economy on the planet. Um, and biggest single impact on this economy is what consumers are doing. 72% of the eco economic activity is driven by consumers. Big beneficiary of low interest rates, low inflation, uh, and low energy prices. So uh, going forward... Uh, we think that the year finishes strong. Um, we are invested for that. Uh, we think that we will see another year of multiple expansion in 2015. Um, there are very hush banks. We are seeing evidence money is starting to come from the bond market into equities. Uh, that's a migration that should go on for a long time. We continue to see more shallow pullbacks, uh, more within trend than trend breaks or trend reversals. That's, that's, that's a positive. Um, and um, we think that you're going to continue to see estimates get taken higher in the U.S. and in certain sectors in Canada. It is interesting to see that there is a high correlation between what's happening in the Canadian market and what's happening in the U.S. market strongest sector of the Canadian market recently has been retail. Companies like Dollarama, uh, Metro Richelieu, Alimentation Goose Card, uh, companies that are benefiting in the same environment, the same way that Target, Walmart, uh, and Home Depot are benefiting in the U.S. Canadian Tire fits into that camp as well. Um, those would be the major themes. Um, I will highlight that um, that uh, the ETF portfolio we have is up about 20% in the last five months, uh, driven by both being short commodities and long U.S. leading sectors. Uh, the long short uh, equity portfolio is having a very good year, um, uh, sort of at the top of the pile in our pools. Uh, and so I think that we're making fairly steady progress. I'll pass it back to Nick to see if there's any questions. Great. Uh, thanks, Dave. Before questions, I just want to underline a few things quickly. 
So really, it's clear following our process, remaining disciplined and conducting those important sector rotations when needed are things we're always focused on here at Bronger. The October dip we experienced does fall precisely in the range of what we, uh, what we expected could occur. And uh, we, you know, we continue to observe many positive tailwinds, uh, many of which Dave covered. Uh, for the markets, and we really feel we're allocated to the, the rate areas. And this is probably uh, especially pronounced today with further declines in resources and names like Air Canada that are up 6 to, to 8 percent. Uh, Q4 has typically been a quarter that's been kind to our general approach, and we feel really well set up. And clearly, the first half of 2015 uh, stands to benefit from, uh, you know, deflationary uh, falling inflation in, in the U.S. and some of the so, just uh, in addition to some of the performance highlights that uh, Dave mentioned, um, a lot of our 30-day strength off of the October lows is, is really considerable. Uh, in mandates particular that can short things that uh, remained weak and, and those that did well, I'd also highlight probably in addition to what Dave mentioned, the tactical balance mandate, uh, which has sailed through uh, that volatility uh, extremely well and is up close to 13 percent. So you'll have you'll hear more from us in the in the coming months on that mandate and hopefully uh, making it easier to allocate uh, clients that way. Uh, and lastly, volatility is very much in check. Um, you know, Dave mentioned the year-to-date beta TSX of uh, 0.6, and historically we know over five years that beta is as low as 0.3. Uh, so definitely very palatable uh, in the eyes of a, of a private investor. Um, so with that, we'll open it up to